Okay, so when we've introduced Frida Kahlo to the students, this is the, the image I like to focus on the most because she is looking straight at the camera and so it's going to be an easy way to teach the idea of self-portrait with young students. First thing I like to do is to analyze the artwork through the four frames and when you're looking at the artwork you can see um, that the kids really like to start to pinpoint things. First of all, you start out with the structural, like what do you have in this picture? And the kids will answer, a woman, okay? And the, one, the woman is not smiling. She's looking straight at the camera. You see a black cat on the right. You see a monkey on the left. You see a thorns around her neck. You see a bird strung to the thorns. You see up here we have dragonflies, but the dragonflies have flowers instead of a face. So, um... Is, and then you can ask the kids, is that real? Is that something real? You start to see um, that we have leaves behind it, green, yellow leaves. We see that her skin tone has kind of reds and peach colors. You see a um, ribbon inside of her hair. We see that she has braids pulled up and the ribbon goes throughout her hair. She has pins that are butterflies. So the kids love to talk about that. They even see the blue sky in the background, the white shirt. And then to notice that there's blood drops from the thorns around her neck. So then you can start talking to the kids about what the symbolism is for this work. So how is this, why would she ever, why would anybody ever put thorns around their neck? Do you think that's real or do you think that's fake? Do you think that she was trying to use her imagination? And so then you can talk about how she is using it as a symbol. And then that's when I talk about symbolism as like the M for McDonald's symbolizes McDonald's and the kids really relate to that. So what could the thorns around her neck symbolize? And that's when the kids can start to analyze and start to think, well, maybe it symbolizes some sort of pain or suffering. And that's when you can go into the idea about how Frida Kahlo from an early age when she was 15 years old, she was in an accident that left her with a lot of pain in her life. And she was constantly in pain. She was constantly in the hospital, out of the hospital, getting a lot of surgeries over her time. So she experienced a lot of pain. And she, she was um, immobile at times. So it was even hard for her to move her neck because she would wear braces around her body to protect her. So um, this is also a great lesson to teach empathy with students. Also, she is from Mexico, and so you can talk about her Mexican heritage and how much that plays into her work. So analyzing this one is really nice because you can go into depth, and then you can give her give a slideshow into some of her other works, um, making sure that you make sure they are um, young children appropriate. And, and then after you've analyzed the work and you've talked to them that, I, that as a teacher, I want to see that you can do a self-portrait and you can use symbolism just like Frida Kahlo. So what we're going to be doing for this project, first, we're going to learn how to do a self-portrait. And then second, you're going to learn how to add symbolism to your picture to represent a little bit about who you are, just like Frida Kahlo has represented about, a little bit about who she is in her work. So... If I'm on the big screen and I have my smart board up, the cool thing about using something like a smart board is that you can actually draw right on top of the smart board. So one of the first things I like to do is to trace over Frida Kahlo's proportions. So I do my upside down egg shape. I divide the page up. I talk about how the eyes aren't at the top of the head. I show the shape of the eyes, I show the shape of the nose, and I draw it with a marker. So um, the kids kind of understand where I'm coming from. They also see where the neckline is. Okay, a lot of kids will draw their necks way too small, so I talk to them about that. And then where the shoulder line is. So I like to keep this picture up to help them um, guide them. Um, and, and, and of course you talk about how everybody has different proportions, everybody looks slightly different. So. A lot of my students appreciate having a checklist and they feel a sense of accomplishment while they're working to work through the checklist with you. Uh, it's great for students with special needs, but I end up using it for everyone because it actually works for every student and it helps with reading as well. So even if they're not able to um, completely read at this stage, whatever stage you're teaching this to, 
um, they can start to do it because they're doing it alongside with you. So I like to use a large piece of paper, a 12 by 18. Um, but if you're at home and you only have a smaller paper, like a 9 by 12, then that's fine just for your um, practice. So I like to have the checklist nearby. And we're going to be um, dividing up the page similar to the way that Frida Kahlo has in here to make sure that we have enough room for the shoulders. Because some kids will make their, pit, their um, head so big that they, um, they don't have room for their shoulders. Or they'll make their head so small that they don't have room to um, do some of the details that they need to. So I like to tell them I like it to be about as big as your hand, the student's hand, okay? So, of course, I don't want them to trace their hand, but that just gives them kind of a visual. The first thing we're going to do on our checklist is an upside-down egg. So we do our head just like this. Now it's not going to be perfect in any kind of way and the kids are going to want to erase and that's okay. This is the time that we're going to erase because this is just our practice paper. This is actually not our real thing. Okay, so an upside down egg and then I always like to explain why I do an upside down egg. I do an upside down egg because mostly our chins are going to be um, pointier than the top round part of our head. Okay, the next thing I need to do is my four guidelines. I'm going to lightly, and I tell them to draw lightly, divide it kind of like a target right in the middle. And this is where we talk about how actually the middle of the head is where the eyes are. If you were to um, divide this up to the top of her head and the bottom of her chin, her eyes are right in the middle. Okay, so now how do we divide up our eyes on this line? I always like to tell them that you can actually fit five eyeballs across a face. So I teach them how to draw a football. And you can show this. You can draw five eyeballs across the head. But of course we only need two eyeballs. So you can have them erase the eyeballs on the outside and the one in the middle. And they are football shapes and sometimes they struggle with this basic football shape. So I teach them how to do a frown and a smile because they all know how to make a frown and they all know how to make a smile and then to connect those two together. Um, one other thing about um, the eyeball is that some of you are going to say, hey, wait, there's actually, you know, a little dip like this or every eye is different. And yes, you're right the details of the eyes, but we're teaching them the very basics of the eye to get them away from thinking about their eyeball as being circular like this, okay? Um, so we do talk about the eyelids. Okay, so I have done my upside down egg, my four guidelines, and my football shaped eyes. Now I'm gonna do the irises and the pupils. I like to teach my kids, just like in Frida Kahlo's picture, that the iris actually um, touches both the top and the bottom and so I do a circle very lightly that touches the top and the bottom like this and then inside I teach them that their pupils are nice and big because it's nice and dark in my room okay just like Frida Kahlo's eyes so I've done my iris and my pupil and then I teach them, when we talk about how awesome Frida Kahlo's um, eyebrows are, but then I teach them to lightly draw eyebrows above their eyes. They have to leave room. Now, a lot of kids are going to be very tempted to want to do eyelashes. I would refrain from letting them do eyelashes because they usually over-exaggerate it. And we talk about how it's very difficult to see, even in her picture, the eyelashes. So I like to wait on the eyelashes for my students. Okay, the nose. So how do we figure out the nose? What I have them do is I've got my center line right here. I'm going to come down to the halfway point, just like this. And then I'm going to divide again another halfway point right here. This first halfway point is actually going to be where the nose starts. And so I teach them how to do this shape right here, where you've got the outside, you've got the nostril down the middle, 
and the outside. Some kids like to connect it and that's okay because Frida Kahlo kind of has like this connected line right here. And some kids just like to leave it simple like that. Or you could even do one. So I give them the options. Do you want to do just a simple line like this? Do you want to connect it with one line? Or do you want to connect it with two lines? So that's up to you to decide how you want to um, let their, your kids do. Okay, and then the last line that we have here that was halfway between the nose and the chin is actually the lips line. And I teach the lips is kind of like a, like this. And then one like this. And then I tell them a little squiggly line down the middle, just like that. Okay, so I've got my nose and I've got my lips. Now the ears is another one that students um, struggle with a little bit. If you notice here, Frida Kahlo's ears go from her eyes to her the bottom of her nose. So look how big they are, all the way from the top of the eyes to the bottom of the nose. So I'm going to draw my ears the same from the top to here. That one looks a little funky there, so I'm going to change that. Okay, that one needs to go a little bit lower to match. Okay, very simple. I don't go into much detail because they are going to be doing some trickier stuff with glue later. I don't want them to do that. Okay, so now that I have this, I need to teach them how. I did the ears. Um, the neck, shoulders, and hairline. Okay, so um, what I like to show them here is that our neck is somewhere near the back of their ears, so I have them feel the back of their ears and I have them feel where their neck is, and you all can do that too. And notice that the neck is, is attached to the ears, so you want a nice thick neck like this. Okay, and then I teach them how to do shoulders, and all I do is I tell them to do a diagonal line off the page, just like Frida Kahlo, just like that. Okay, um, if they want to, they can do a shirt attached right here to help them out. So I've done the um, neck and I've done the shoulders, but I have not yet done the hairline. Um, and Frida Kahlo's hair, she has it very thick and it's coming off of her. And the hairline is not up here. The hairline usually starts somewhere about right here. Okay, so my hair is to the side a little bit, so I draw the line here. I like to swoop it across my face down the side and off the scalp a little bit and then down like this and then the same right over here. Now everybody's hair is going to be different in the way that you do it. Okay, so um, this is the basics for how to do this sketch right here. Um, ideally, if this was your finished artwork, you would be erasing your guidelines, but leaving it just like this for the practice paper is really nice um, for the students so you understand that they are following the guidelines. Don't forget they need to have their name on the back. So for this portion, this is only your warm-up picture. This picture would go home um, for them to be able to practice later. Um, and you can bring this checklist and you can attach this to the back so they know what they were covering so they can practice it later because they're going to be getting ready for their actual artwork which is going to be on black paper with a glue line.